For this third part of our introduction to SciFinder Web, we go to look at another way of searching within SciFinder, and that, of course, is to search for reaction information. Now, if you are interested in, in finding reactions, there's actually a few ways that you can, you can do this. And first of all, let's, let's look at a fairly straightforward way that we can find reaction information. And this, first of all, is if we come down to our substances and we go to Substance Identifier, and what I can do here, of course, is I can uh, type in a name of a substance or I can enter its CAS registry number and then search. And when we have found our substance that we are interested in, and I'm using retigabine again as I did in uh, part two, I'll see the substance record and if I want to look at the full information about this substance then as you already now know I can either click here on the CAS registry number or if I use this chevron I can click on view substance detail. But also if we look at this record straight away we can see that the presence of this green flask says yes there are reactions within SciFinder that involve retigabine. Also, if I click on the chevron, I have a couple of choices here. I can either say synthesize this, which of course will look for reactions where this is the product. Or alternatively, what I can do is go the one down and I can be a little bit more specific. And I can choose product, which will give me the same as synthesize this, reactant, reagent, catalyst solvent or any role, meaning it doesn't matter what its involvement is, I will bring back all of the reactions. But let's take a look of uh, reactions where we look into make this substance. So of course I can use either synthesize this or I can come across here to product and I will get the same set of answers. So I'm going to click on product and I've got 94 reactions here in total that actually makes this given substance. Now if you've never looked at the reaction information in SciFinder before what you will also see is I have analyze and refine options that are based around reactions. So I can see that I can analyze by things such as the reagent I can also analyse by things such as the, the solvent as well and lots of other things including the number of steps that may be involved, the product yield, um, you know, what is the document type that this may have come from as well. I can also use refine so in fact what I can do is I can go back to my structure if I did draw a structure that I could do that. I can refine by a product yield if I'm looking for something very specific number of steps and so on. You'll also see that I can do some of this uh, functionality right here by the sort by as well. It's sorted by a session number so this reaction that we've got at the top will be the most recent that we have included into the SciFinder content or we can also change that to things such as sort by the product yield. Give me the higher yielding reactions at the top. And in fact, you can see for this first reaction now, we have a 100% yield reported and it started to drop down to, to 95%. So I can use this first way if I know precisely what my substance is, then I can search for that substance and then click on the either the green flask or I can choose synthesize this and so on to give me my list of, of reactions. Now, if we take that a little step further, then our second option, of course, is if we come across and I'm going to go to reaction structure. I'm going to open up the editor. And as we've seen previously, I'm going to enter in the, the registry number for this. So I can create this structure. Now, the first thing I'm going to do when I've created my structure on the screen is I need to notify SciFinder what exactly am I going to try and do with this and in fact we've got a couple of uh, things that we can do here. First of all there is the option to add a reaction role so if I click this and I go anywhere 
on my uh, structure, it doesn't matter where, then I can choose product, uh, reactant, reagent, any role, reactant or reagent. The other option is I can use my reaction arrow. And as if I use this and I draw the arrow right here, then it's going to assume that I want to search for reactions where this is a is a product. So anything to the right hand side of that arrow will be seen to be in a product that I'm interested in. Now again I can search for substructures of this but also if I want to search it pretty much as it is then I can click on variable at only at specified positions. If I OK this and I search it then in this case I actually get 125 reactions from my uh, from my list and that is of course because when we search by structure we also find um, charged forms, deuterated forms as well. So we will get some additional reactions when we search it by the structure. Now of course if we want to go the, to the absolute broadest way then we can click on the on the substructure and when I search for this I now jump up to 579 reactions in total that will include my substance, any deuterated forms and so forth and lastly of course where my substance my, or what I've drawn is embedded in a, in a larger structure. So that is one of the first ways that we can maybe take something that we know and search for it either specifically when we go to the substance identifier or if we also want to maybe allow for, for other things as well if we use the, uh, the reaction structure drawing as well. Now what I'm going to come on to next will illustrate a couple of the other features of searching for reactions in SciFinder. So I'm going to go back to my uh, my drawing window and what I'm actually going to do now I'm going to bring in um, a new reaction so I'm going to take this uh, it's a fairly broad reaction as you can see reactant go into products so I've got um, carboxylic acid to a carbamate group uh, first of all I'm just going to to lock the rings on this so that will prevent any other ring systems fusing onto this. Okay, I'm going to run this in its broadest sense now as a, as a substructure search. So let's click on OK. And let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so we've got 15,000 reactions. Wow, that's, uh, that's quite a lot. Um, but we can see where it's highlighted in red, we can see why these reactions were, were actually retrieved. And if we look down through some of these reactions, they're all good reactions. There may be other reactants involved as well, of course, um, but we can see why they were brought back. But let's take a look at this one, for example. Now, what I've actually drawn is present. So I see the carboxylic acid there, I see my carbamate. But what I see in this case is what I've drawn that this carbamate did not come from the carboxylic acid. So how can we, you know, say to SciFinder, we need to make sure that the reaction happens at this particular site. This is where the transformation needs to be. Well, in fact, there is something that we can do. And if we go back to our structure again, I'll do this a few times, so I hope you don't get too dizzy with this. I click on my structure, and what I can do is use what we call the map atoms. And if I click on map atoms, I'm going to mark this carbon and this one. That will say to SciFinder, the transformation is going to happen here, not anywhere else in my, in my, in my structure. So if I search this again, Let's see what we get now. Okay, so that has already come down quite substantially from over 15,000 to just under, under four. So we have had a, you know, a good drop in the, in the number of reactions there. But we also have other things going on as well in, in, uh, in some of these reactions. And in fact, we can see 
in this case we've got two carboxylic acids we only drew one but both of them have reacted okay we can see that both of them have undergone a transformation they've both reacted within our uh, our search reactions so what if we don't want this to happen maybe we have a structure and we know that we are using one functional group there may be others perhaps there but we don't want them being involved in a reaction well the first thing that i would say to you is when you draw a structure to search for reactions in scifinder anything that you draw is is pretty much game on which means it can participate in the reaction but if perhaps there are other groups there that you don't want to be involved in a reaction first of all you don't need to include those but what we can do is if again we come back to our structure this time if we come to the advanced search what we can do here is we can actually say to to SciFinder if there is another occurrence of a you know carboxylic acid or any other kind of carboxy derivative I don't want it to react and likewise we could maybe choose other functional groups as well that we don't want to draw in but if there are reactions with there where they react we don't want to see them we don't want to have these participating in the reaction so by doing this what I'm saying is if there are reactions there with a second carboxylic acid group or carboxy group I don't want it to be reacting in my reactions so let's search that again all right and now we've come down to one and a half thousand so that's pretty good but let's take a look at this first reaction that we have here again my carboxylic is present I can see it you know it's also there in the second one but that transformation this this carbamate is still at that same site so how can I stop this how can I stop this happening so what I want to make sure that SciFinder understands is it is the carboxylic that is going to be participating in the reaction and there's one other thing that we can do if we come back now to our reaction once more we can use this feature which is to mark bonds to be formed or broken and if we click on this we're basically saying this bond is going to break this bond will be formed this also works if you have a reaction where maybe the bond changes from a double to a single bond then of course we can also do that so we are basically saying there will be a change whether it forms or breaks or changes um, you know it, its value so if we search this now we are now down to 338 reactions so we have gone from a number of you know re reactions that was completely unreasonable to go through and to and to review now down to a manageable amount and that is fine and of course what we are now able to do we can look through these reactions we can further refine or analyze so we can maybe analyze by uh, the presence of a catalyst any catalyst that may be there palladium and, and so on or of course we can you know maybe also analyze again by things such as the solvents and bring our answer sets down a little bit further again there as well so I hope this has given you some idea of a of a few other things that you can do in SciFinder and particularly when it comes to searching for um, reaction information thank you very much for listening